This is Business Rockstars, I'm Mark Lack. We're here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. Joining us right now is Cynthia Johnson. She's the CEO and co-founder of Ip City Media. It's a pleasure Hi. to have you on the show with us. Thank you for having me. This is a wonderful opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an opportunity for you to tell us about your company. What do you guys do? Yeah, so we are a uh, personal brand development and management company. So we uh, accelerate a personal, person's thought leadership. Um, we don't usually work directly with clients, though, so we partner with uh, VCs, go-to-market strategy companies, and work directly with their, their uh, entrepreneurs and okay. people they've invested in. Um, and we use their personal brand to directly benefit their business. Very cool. And you got into this space how? <laughs> uh, I always love to know how people yeah. got into the business they're in. <laughs> uh, so I actually started out doing social media. I worked with a lot of great people. And um, personal brand branding sort of came natural mm. just because it's all really about networking. Uh, and that's kind of my forte. <laughs> so, uh, so I started networking and I realized that there's an accelerated way to do this. Um, and if you have very clear goals, then there's actually a lot of ways you can do this to directly benefit the mm. charities or the companies that you're tied to. And you are in the personal branding space, and so you came right. with the company, or? Exactly. <laughs> okay, so you've been building your no, personal brand so, for a while. Yeah, so my personal okay. brand, uh, I was partnered at a digital marketing agency, okay. um, and having a personal brand obviously benefited the agency. Yeah. And so from there, uh, in July of 2015, we were acquired by a public health care company. Mm. Uh, and the company, uh, you know, I took over brand development for them at mm. that time. The company that took over? Right. Okay. Uh, and I realized that uh, being a drug and rehab health care company, mm -hmm. that telling the story of a lot of our employees, because um, a lot of them are sober and recovery, okay. actually was very helpful. Uh, it increased referrals. Uh, it increased, I mean, we could get them on TV, we could of get course, them, you know yeah. what I mean? It was amazing. And yeah. so I uh, started exploring this a little bit more and realizing that um, there's just a faster, uh, better way to do it. Yeah. Um, but that, again, it is not necessarily for, for everyone. We really like to work with people that we believe in what they stand for and who they are and what they're trying to achieve. So we get to be very selective and yeah. um, really get to know some amazing people. That's the ideal <laughs> yeah. way to run a business, right? Be right. selective in who you work with. Exactly. <laughs> Did you always know that you wanted to get an entrepreneurship? Was it something that you stumbled in? Were you the kid selling candy bars? Yeah. Did you have a job that you hated? No, I always knew I was a terrible employee. Uh, yeah. Me too. I, yeah, I was never a very good employee at all. And so... Which is weird. I'm a good team player, a terrible employee. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's when you're sort of following a vision you don't either aren't yeah. given the opportunity to understand or you don't believe in and I, I'm not I'm not very good at that and so a lot of jobs do a terrible job at that right? right and I actually started off I was like I'm gonna travel I'm gonna see what this this, this whole thing is about and uh, I took off for six months <laughs> and realized I was like oh this internet thing is amazing I can do this anywhere and I have the freedom and then mm -hmm. that sort of kind of fell into entrepreneurship um, became a partner uh -huh. In an agency and working with some really amazing entrepreneurs, help. Very cool. Yeah. What's the fav What's your favorite thing? Okay. That you get to do as an entrepreneur. Oh, uh, my favorite thing that I get to do, um, other than you know, wake up when I want to. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is is network with other entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs are dreamers and they are there as a support. Being an entrepreneur isn't easy. It's actually very difficult. And yeah. uh, everyone thinks it's like. Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> oh, like your life's amazing. You're like, no, actually, yeah, yeah. I don't really get no, to wake up. I guarantee it's harder than Yeah, your, it's than a your lot job. harder than you think it is. Um, and so being around people that are motivated to really uh, yeah. make change and difference is probably my favorite part. I love that. Yeah. Do you guys have, you said that you, you, you have companies associate themselves to charities. Do, is your organization associated with one or do you guys give back in different ways? Yeah, so I'm actually on the board of directors for the um, UN Women LA chapter. Nice. Uh, and I also work with the uh, Charlotte and Gwyneth Gray Foundation to Cure Batten Disease. Um, and some of the people on the team obviously uh, work with LA Food Bank. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of local initiatives just where we can have the biggest impact, obviously. Uh, and then across the board, yeah, everyone we work with is in some way involved in the cause. I love it because yeah. it reminds me of <laughs> one of my favorite quotes I try to live by and make sure companies that I consult with live by. And that's don't just make a dollar, make a difference. Let's talk about adversity for a second. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know what was one of the hardest parts when making the shift from being an employee to being a full-time CEO, co-founder of a company? Right. Uh, saying goodbye to my paycheck. No. <laughs> saying goodbye to the paycheck. Uh, yeah. To hopefully make more later. Yeah, and I think, yeah. you know, 
you know, I was uh, able to command a certain salary, and there was definitely yeah. the security that, on one hand, I actually really disliked. Mm. And then on the other hand, obviously, is, is comforting to know is there. Um, so that yeah. would be the first thing, is realizing <laughs> that, yes, you are on your own, and you have to help yourself along the way. Uh, the second thing is that not everyone understands your idea. Uh, and so realizing that... If you're going to try to do something new, then it's not going to fit with what everyone thinks is the right way, or not. Some of his friends, some of and his until, family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And until you make mm -hmm. it happen, uh, there's really you, you kind of have to avoid that. And that was a little bit difficult because you're like, wait, you don't believe in me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But they do now. No, just <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> but that was probably one of the harder parts. Yeah. I want to know a habit or a ritual that you live by, that's made you successful, happy, healthy, wealthy, whatever it may be. Because I've noticed that successful people, happy people, yeah. healthy people, have habits and rituals that make that so. And the people that are unhappy, sick, and broke usually have yeah. no idea what rituals and habits are. And that's the reason why. I mean, they have bad habits and rituals that keep them unhappy, sick, and broke. So you, I'm sure, consciously, right have chosen yeah. to have some habits and rituals that serve you in a great way. Mm -hmm. What's one or two of them? I, I think, okay, so one of them would be uh, the way I handle emails. Mm. Okay, so that's really important. Well, help emails me on. What, are what do you really do? important. <laughs> um, I actually found a wonderful tool, uh, intro.io, it's, it's been helping me, um, is I will put things in folders that have been, haven't been answered. I can't get to mm. it, I'll put it in a folder um, because I think there's nothing worse. I'd rather, get, I'd rather give someone a late email than a half written email or a half sincere or something I forget about. Yeah. Uh, and also there's nothing worse than going through my inbox. And um, so I'll do that at the end of every day and then at the beginning of every day I'll go through yeah. them and see what I can get to that day and try to <laughs> try to knock it out. I've got about a thousand <laughs> yeah. emails I haven't responded to. Because yeah. for me it's like if I look at it and it's not urgent, I know. And I don't mean it in a bad way, like the person's not at the top of the totem pole of importance. Right. Um, it doesn't get answered sometimes and it just keeps getting pushed down and then you're like Yo, it's been two months. It's been so long. I, I ain't even digging that deep. I know. <laughs> I'm going to go two weeks down, but I'm not going two months right. down. Right. And you're lucky because people tend to be very forgiving in that way, but I, think, I, <laughs> I think don't think they have I think it's also a lesson. I think it's also a lesson is that if you haven't been responded to, reach back out. It yeah. has to do with fault. People be like, oh, well, they blew me off. No, they're busy. Like, right. be persistent. Keep reaching back out. Yeah, definitely be persistent because there was a time where this ritual sort of got created because people weren't reaching out. And... Yeah. Again, Somebody created that because there's obviously demand. Exactly, exactly. That, it's helpful. It reaches out for you, and, you yeah, know? even better. Um, so that's one thing. And then uh, I work out four days a week. I run. Nice. I do whatever. I spend four yeah. hours at minimum, like just exercising. Uh, a week, not a day. No, no, a week. I mean, okay. I, you know, I tend to do more. But when you're traveling, and it's just you can't. It's tough to keep up. Right. Yeah. So making sure that. Because if you don't take care of yourself, it doesn't really matter what you're trying to achieve because you're not going to yes. be able to get as far as you would if you You're either going to pay mm -hmm. the price of working on your health today or you're going to pay the price later of paying for your right, hospital exactly. bills and your health bills. <laughs> right. <laughs> trying to get and, healthy. Uh, yeah, and as an entrepreneur, you have your own health care. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> um, exactly. so, so those are some of probably my biggest uh, habits. And never check a bag. We'll be right back with Cynthia Johnson to talk more about her company, Ip City Media. I'm Mark Lack. This is Business Rockstars, connecting a community of entrepreneurs. You can join us on Facebook, Twitter, and online at businessrockstars.com. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Mark Lack. We're here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. Cynthia Johnson's in the house oh, joining us right fun. now. She's the CEO and co-founder of Ip City Media. Recap first what your company does. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we are a personal brand development and management company. and mm -hmm. We accelerate thought leadership for uh, individuals that have causes, companies, or purposes that we believe in. I love it. And you were just telling me before the camera yeah. started rolling, <laughs> you're looking for somebody new to be on the team. Tell yeah. us, give us a shout out. Maybe somebody out there, there will be is, right So there. there's a second project that I can't dive too much into right yeah. now, um, but it's, it's a software product, so mm -hmm. um, it'll be in the B2B SaaS space, and we're looking for a tech, tech yeah. co-founder. 
Nice. And that is, uh, if you know anybody, yeah, and it's, you know, someone, Cynthia's looking. I, I love everything, I like to do things through referrals, yeah. um, because, I mean, people know people they've worked with, and it would take yeah. so long to vet. A quality referral. Quality referral. Yeah. Uh, so if anyone knows a tech co-founder or hey, is Cynthia, a tech co-founder. Find her on social media. Know, yeah. Let's talk about mm -hmm. that, though. You're, you're strict not only in who you want to look to hire, mm -hmm. but you're strict in who you work with. Right. Exactly. And I love that because for, I, I, not for years, um, for months, I made the mistake starting out when I was doing coaching and consulting of, hey, they got checks with commas on them, credit card, you know, credit cards with yeah. commas being deposited on my authorized.net account, you can be a client. And it was like, I can work with you, yeah. we can make it happen, I can get you the results. And then I found out there's a specific ideal client yeah. profile, customer avatar, target audience, there's all these different names people call them, that I should be working with. Right. That I have the perfect diagnostic filtration process that says, if you're this person, you have to go through this process to confirm, and if you are, and these are the results that you want and the problems you have, right. you're the perfect person for us to work with, and inevitably we can get you the results. I wasn't doing it that way, you guys are. Yes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I learned how to restructure my business with really, really strict qualification processes. Yeah. Tell us what yours looks like. So, uh, so we are, <coughs> coming from an agency background, you've gone through the, the horrors of um, when it's not a fit, when it, and mm -hmm. by not a fit is that you want to work with someone, especially when you're working, you know, we, it's, uh, this is not an inexpensive thing. We don't work with everybody. We, you know what I mean? It's, a, and mm -hmm. it is accelerated thought leadership. So to accelerate someone's thought leadership and they're maybe not yeah. the best um, person to be there is, is difficult. So uh, we actually do an entire audit. Uh, you know, there are certain criteria that need to be met. Uh, we aren't going to build your story. Like you have to come with the story. Mm -hmm. We want to, um, you know, craft and tell the success of someone who yeah. has good intentions. Um, we, you have to be tied to, to some sort of nonprofit or cause, mm -hmm. um, and you have to be willing to work with us. And so that is, it's really about the relationship. Um, obviously there's, there's a few other things, you know, um, don't lie. <laughs> the moment yeah. we find out that something you said isn't true, it, it yeah. you know, it sets us back. Mm -hmm. um, so we go through the checks and balances, making sure that, you know, we know the person that referred you. Um, we are primarily referral based, uh, that your story checks out, that you have a bigger cause and mm -hmm. um, that you're going to treat us like a, a team member and not as, uh, an employee because again I'm a terrible employee so yeah just because you, you want to be on my yeah, yeah you want to be on my we're team we're a partner I love that. right exactly so let's talk about what your first year of business was like uh, so basically I mean it was a little bit different for us um, we you went, just came out the gate swinging no but we went in with <laughs> the mindset of um, you know our we have again we have other goals we have mm -hmm. other aspirations and other projects as well and um, this was to meet and work with really amazing people. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is uh, started putting ourselves out there, attending lots of events. And just by, uh, again, through these networking, through going and speaking on panels and telling people what we did and being extremely transparent um, was helpful. And so we ended up working with um, a couple different VCs who then uh, will further clients. So our relationship is with them. We trust the people that they are willing to invest in and and we can bring them on that way. And, you know, also you have someone on your team and that's great. Uh, so mm -hmm. we, we wanted to build it that way. The struggle, I think, was that uh, people, and this is where we move sort of the VC uh, or working with their partners, is that um, investing in yourself isn't something people think uh, right away. The cost isn't exactly um, inherent. They don't, you know, so... Meaning they meaning don't know they didn't realize if they don't there invest in cost. themselves, oh, yeah. when they do it. Because so it's getting, both. It's like return it's on both. investment right. and then cost of inaction. If I don't invest it, in myself, exactly. will I wake up wishing and regretting in three to five years? Right. I have. Right. And so explaining to someone the cost... Uh, See, that, I don't even like the word cost. I yeah. reframe it and use the word investment. investment. Somebody goes, how much is this going to exactly. cost me? I go... Whoa, 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 there's no cost mm -hmm. here at all. And they're like, oh, what? And I go, the investment is 250000 right. but there's no cost. Exactly, and we also invest in relationships, and mm -hmm. everything's, um, I'm always open for discussion. I think yeah. that there's Always a open to explore. Right, there's a lot yeah. of different ways you can win in yeah. a relationship. There's a lot of different ways you can 
help each other, and if this particular way isn't a fit, and um, at the first, people weren't willing to have that conversation. Mm. So reaching out and saying, look, like, there, I know who you are. I mean, these are great people doing amazing things. Yeah. Maybe this isn't the right way to work together, but let's work together this way. And then referral clients came that way. So it took okay. persistence <clears throat> and sort of pivoting on our part to make that happen. So okay. I would like to know what an aha moment has been for you mm. as an entrepreneur and business owner. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I actually just did an interview uh, in Forbes mm -hmm. on this. And I was like, all this, and they want to talk about when I quit my job. No, I was kidding. Yeah. Um, uh, and actually, so uh, I have done some traveling, and I worked for a company. And uh, I, so they moved me to a new project. I was like, all right, I'm going to move this project. I'm going to save this money, and I'm going to go and travel. Yeah. And uh, then I remember I started, I actually enjoyed the job. I was like, oh, great. Well, I got to quit. And then my mom yeah. said, <laughs> she was like, don't quit, ask for the time off. And I was like, mom, you're crazy. No one's going to give me time off for six months. Yeah. And then I went in and I, and I said... Can, now that I've been I hired, just, can I take a half a year yeah, off? <laughs> yeah, and I just blurted it out. Yeah. And the guy came back and he, you know, my boss at the time, and he said, okay, we actually can't let you leave and come back. It's company policy, so we'll put you on a stipend if you can do X amount of hours a month, and we'll see you when you get back. Yeah. And it hit me, I was like, there's so much power in the ask. Like I had just, like I had made my own, like sealed my own fate by thinking for someone, uh, and so being extremely transparent and just asking for things. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt that. That was my aha moment. I realized that there's a lot of growth and a lot of opportunity in this world if you mm -hmm. ask for it. Yeah. Um, that would be my biggest aha moment. I think it was like, oh, I, I love it. I can get whatever, not whatever I want, but I can at yeah. least ask for it. <laughs> Very powerful stuff. So for the entrepreneur who's in their nine to five job, mm -hmm. they've got bills to pay, maybe even a family and mouths to feed, yeah. but they are trying, trying so hard to listen to shows like this, to collect the puzzle mm -hmm. pieces and put them together to figure out, you know, when's the right time to quit my job and go all right. in on my dream. Right. For the people that are struggling, yeah. what's your advice to them? It, my advice is, and this was, you know, for me as well as the road you're on now, mm -hmm. you know where that's going to end. And yeah. there's as much risk there mm -hmm. as there is in making the change now. Mm -hmm. Because if you're unhappy now, you'll just be unhappier later. And then you'll be unhappy with yourself. Because then you'll have a regret. Because you'll have a regret. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's, a, there's a heavy burden to really walk around with, especially when you're doing it day to day. It's something you don't necessarily enjoy. And there's this hanging thing on mm -hmm. the side, right? Uh, so just, you know, you don't necessarily have to quit your day job right away, but you need to make steps towards your dream, see if it's, you know, feel it out, get mm -hmm. an idea of the space, the industry, uh, and then, you know, find the smartest way to make that jump as soon as possible because uh, you don't know where you're going to end up there, and that mm -hmm. is the greatest feeling in the world. How can people tap back into their why? or reignite their why or find their why and their purpose so they can go out and step yeah. into their full potential, earn the money and have the impact they really want. Yeah, the, I mean, one way to do it, and this is kind of like a, a Steve Jobs thing, you know, he said, wake up every day, look in the mirror, and if, I, yeah. if I'm happy doing what I'm doing today, then, you know, that's great. And if I say, no, I'm not, too many days in a row, I know there needs to be change. And uh, asking yourself those questions is really important, even mm -hmm. if it's as simple as responding to an email to a coworker, mm -hmm. or why am I doing this? If you can't justify it, if it's just because of a paycheck, then you know that there's something that needs to change, and you can start to sort of dial it down. And as yeah. you ask yourself throughout the day, why am I doing something else? And mm -hmm. you're like, I know why I'm doing that. Yeah. It's like you kind of start to figure out your purpose. Uh, but it all goes back to the ask. You, you could ask yourself, you have to ask your friends, you have to be okay with being transparent and vulnerable to, if you really want to figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that's difficult. It's difficult for everyone, but once yeah. you do it, it's the most freeing feeling in the world. It definitely <laughs> you is. just let go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> definitely the most freeing feeling. Let's talk about questions, quotes, stories, and sayings. Mm -hmm. As we come to a wrap on our segment, I want to know, um, is there a, que a powerful question that you live by? Are there powerful quotes yeah. that you live by? I feel like I've noticed there's so many people that cripple themselves because of a limiting story that happened to them in their past. And then they ask themselves disempowering yeah. questions. They you know, live by ridiculous sayings like, you've only got one chance to live, so yeah. whatever you choose to go into, you better make sure it's the right thing. And that holds them back from ever 
taking a risk or starting a business or right. asking for something bigger in case they fail. So on the flip side, do you have some powerful questions or quotes or stories or sayings that you live by that empower you? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think one is I'm a big fan of Mr. Rogers. I don't know, Fred Rogers yeah. is uh, extremely empowering. Uh, and, you know, he always said to look for the helpers in time of crisis, in time of need, in time of transition, and look for the people that can help. And that could be as simple as, all right, I just lost my job and I need to do this. Look mm-hmm. around and and see who's available because you, you can't do everything alone. In fact, I would say you, there's, you can't do most things alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and And so taking into account everyone around you. Uh, and then another one, and this came from working in a corporation, is uh, Joel Goodnight said, uh, you know, if you treat your employees like they can make a difference, they will. Mm. Uh, and that's how I feel about people in general, is that when you do have a small team or you are on this next venture, or maybe you're just thinking about starting it and you're mm. just with your family and friends, um, those people can make a difference. You don't know how. Treat them like they can and figure out, yeah. and um, also be available f- for them as, as well. So it's uh, it all kind of stems back to people. Yeah, I love <laughs> yeah. it. At the end of the day, just, at the end of the day, it's just, people. Just be a nice person. We just interviewed somebody earlier. <laughs> like, yeah, like, just... One of the most important things in business is the people, because you yeah. could have you could have a great product, great systems, everything mm-hmm. in the company being great. But if the people aren't great, then it's never going to succeed. So. I love that you brought that up. I appreciate you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Where can people learn more about your company? Uh, Yeah, so you can uh, find me at CynthiaLive.com, Ipsaity.com, or uh, at CynthiaLive. We don't do a ton of marketing, but uh, at CynthiaLive, you'll see where I am and where our company is at all times. Uh, We do lots of events. We'd love to see everyone. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing with our audience. Appreciate it. I'm Mark Lack. This is Business Rockstars, connecting a community of entrepreneurs. You can join us on Facebook, Twitter, and online at businessrockstars.com.